Think your family's insane? Ow, quit it. Ow, quit it. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dysfunctional TV families. My lucky day. For this list, we've chosen those TV families that have more reasons to break up than to stay together. They fight each other, backstab each other, and seem to all out hate each other. It's kind of freaking me out right now. But despite their differences, they still try to make things work. And boy, is it entertaining. Dangerous work. Doing my job, unsuspecting, when out of nowhere I am slammed into ribs by a headless flying chicken. However, you won't find any soap opera families on this list, because that just wouldn't be fair. And if you're looking for a list of more traditional family units, be sure to check out our list of the top 10 TV families. You want to know what the best thing about childhood is? At some point, it stops. Number 10, The Gallagher's Shameless. Frank Gallagher, father, teacher, mentor, captain of our little ship. Based on the popular British show of the same name, these Gallaghers have a lot to live up to. We know how to f***ing party! <laughs> but they've more than exceeded their quota of what it takes to be a dysfunctional family. They lie, cheat, and steal to get what they need. But that's probably because alcoholic Frank has set such a good example. Listen to me, stupid! You think you know everything, but you know shit! He only brings trouble to the family whenever he shows up. Like that time he got them to pretend he was dead so he could avoid the thugs after him. Suicide. I know you're faking it. Come on, open your eyes, you lying, squirrely sack. Jesus, Rob! You're alive or not? Come on! What's the matter with you? Look at him, he's dead! Number nine. The Lannisters, Game of Thrones. The house that puts family first will always defeat the house that puts the whims and wishes of its sons and daughters first. Led by the vicious and calculating Tywin, the Lannisters are a powerful bunch, but one that is dysfunctional to the core. While Tywin doesn't have much time for his son, the Imp, it's the other kids that are the bigger issue. She has our cravings, our sister, <laughs> a family trait. Cersei's three kids are actually her brother, Jamie's not King Robert Baratheon's, and it's just about the worst kept secret in the Seven Kingdoms. Madness. Madness and stupidity. It figures that Joffrey is a product of incest, given his unusually cruel and devious behavior when he becomes king. Who's next? Number eight, the Wilkerson's Malcolm in the Middle. Well, that's gonna end badly. These clippers are dull already. Honestly, Hal, you're like a monkey. Hal and Lois would probably win the award for most stressed out parents ever, after all their boys have put them through. If you could just find it in your heart to forgive me, I know I could earn your trust back. Their oldest, Francis, can't seem to get it together, even after military school. I wrote you guys a really long letter yesterday. But listen, they only gave me like three minutes here, so would you put the special prosecutor on? Mom, it's Francis! Reese is a psycho set on torturing his younger brothers, and Dewey is a genius but a major spaz. Malcolm most resembles a normal kid, but even he can't escape Lois's constant yelling and scolding and his father's constant, well, uselessness. I'm the nice one. Yeah, that's true. You're the bad one. The system can't work with two bad cops. Oh, I hate cops. Cops. Jeez. And you know what else I hate are those, what do you call them? Those, uh... I just wasn't ready for this from Malcolm. I mean... Soap salesman. Now by the power vested in me by the state. Oh, come on, Bert. Number seven, the Coopers, the OC. Hello. Caitlin, hey, is your mom around? Yeah, she's kind of getting married right now. This family was young, rich, and extremely good looking. But in Orange County, that only guarantees deep unhappiness. Nothing for you to worry about, okay? Jimmy, the family patriarch, can't seem to stop stealing money from his clients, and his ex Julie has a past as a porn star and makes wise decisions like dating her teenage daughter's ex boyfriend. I, mean, I never went to college or learned any real skills. And now here I am, 
20 years later, still knocked up on my wedding day. With parents like these, it's no wonder Marissa had a self-destructive streak that led to alcoholism, depression, and relationships with bad boys. He hooks up with everyone. Shut up. Freshman girls, girls from modern day, girls from UCI. Is that true? Marissa, everyone knows. Everyone. Now you do too. Number six, The Simpsons. Oh, Daddy, Daddy, we're, we're finally so glad home. to see you. What? Why? We couldn't imagine a better feuding family than The Simpsons. I want to make sure the kids don't hear. When I was young, I always hated knowing my parents were fighting. They're fighting in the car again. That music always sends a chill down my spine. After more than 25 years on the air, we've seen them go through more crazy antics than any normal family would tolerate. They've raised a menace to society in Bart. Maggie's still a baby, and Lisa's too smart for her own good. Meanwhile, Homer's pretty much the biggest dope ever, and poor Marge has to stop him from choking the kids all the time. You stop fighting! Mom, that's not how you pry them apart! I've been prying them apart since before you were born! But they remain a family unit against all odds, dysfunctional as it may be. You know, kids, it's getting pretty late. Yeah, you should go to bed, Grandpa. We've had a big day. No, you wise guy, little smarter. Number five. The Sopranos. Ew! Get out of here! You're so gross! Uh, Girls, mm -hmm. you want some of last night's for you, Adele? Mm, get out of here with that fat. When your father is a mob boss, it's pretty hard to have a regular home life. <laughs> Tony wasn't easy to get along with, and his numerous affairs probably didn't help the family dynamic. Is this Mrs. Sopranos? Yes, it is. I used to f your husband. But to Tony's credit, his son AJ was one of the worst brats we've ever seen on TV. Don't buy him anything big. We overindulge him. His wife wasn't really in love with him, and his extended family only wanted to use him. Only Meadow had it somewhat together. This family was the perfect candidate for a group therapy session. And then it's dysfunction this, and dysfunction that, and dysfunction my fungal. You have strong feelings about this. Not all Jewish people are rich. I never knew one it wasn't. Number four, the bunkers, all in the family. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing. No hello, even they said hello. They said hi. But you said nothing. Well, I was gonna say good oh, evening. Oh, skip it, will you skip it? I've learned to expect nothing but aggravation from you anyhow. Before there was Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin, there was Archie Bunker, the king of political incorrectness. Oh, listen, Mr. Big Liberal, you brought up their religion, not me. If they're good lawyers, for all I care, it could be chinks. There was no group or target that Archie was afraid to upset. I happen to be very proud of my Polish heritage. What heritage? You come from a long line of bowling teams. In the show's theme song, Archie longs for the good old days when girls were girls and men were men. No, Those were the days. days. But despite Archie's outdated philosophy and his bigotry, Edith, Gloria, and her man Mike stood by him and tolerated his outrageous behavior. Audiences did too, and the show became a critical success, spawning numerous spin-offs. But do you love me? <laughs> Will you stop that? You sing like a piece of chalk on a blackboard. Is there anything else we should know about? Oh, have you not heard? Heard what? Number three, the Griffins, Family Guy. So what do we got? Pancakes? Cool. Hey, what's on tap for school today, kids? Shut up, Dad. The Griffins are that family that everyone dreads hanging out with at social events. They're loud, unruly, and don't seem to know any social cues. It's a beautiful baby girl. Oh, a baby girl. I'm so happy. But she has a penis. Well, we'll have to do something about that. Peter, no, it's a boy. Peter has no filter, Chris is an idiot, Meg has no self-esteem, and Lois is a kleptomaniac former meth addict. Plus, Stewie is the most evil one-year-old you'll ever meet. What's the most wonderful thing that could happen to this family? Hmm. Well, the Phillies won. But you can't help but love the Griffins because they're real with each other when it would be so much easier to lie. I found my baby book. Hey, here's the broken condom that led to my birth. And the resulting lawsuit bought us this house. Mm, you're my favorite mistake. Number two, the Bluths, Arrested Development. 
The big deal, Mom, is that the family is falling apart. They're trying to sell their stock, and I can't promise you that I can keep everyone together until the party. As far as families go, the Bluths have to be the most eclectic group to ever share the same set of DNA. Nothing about this family makes sense, not the least of which is the fact that these two are twins. I'm not your sister. What? I'm adopted. Hey, Lindsay. I'm three years older. Hey, there must be some mistake. No, Mom confirmed it. Michael seems to be the only semi-normal one, but it's easy to look normal when your family includes an escaped convict for a patriarch, a set of kissing cousins, a hopeless magician. For one moment it's here, and in the next, Monopoly. And a sexed-up, raging alcoholic of a mother. Oh, and Buster. Oh, I'm an uptight Buster! You old horny slut! Well, no one's gonna top that. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Chris? Nice to meet you. David Fisher? David! Claire! Is Nate there yet? Uh, nope. I thought he was coming in tonight so we could do that whole forced Christmas Eve family thing. Perfect. Dad, the, the hinges are all rusted here. That's why the wind keeps blowing the door off. I hate that old door. Throw it off! Serenity now! I have often walked on this street before. Al, you eat like an animal. <laughs> Number one, the Bundys married with children. No, no, don't mob me. I'm just the breadwinner. No, don't push. You'll all get your chance to hug and kiss me. Apparently cursed to a life of mediocrity, the Bundys make a mess of basically everything they attempt. Way yeah. to go, Dad. You oh, sure you know, you know. That's great. It's just fabulous. <laughs> and it's that Bundy curse that's caused them to essentially give up since that's way easier than putting any effort into anything. Well, he found his way out, and he has knocked up every dog in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous, Peg. He's a lifeless lump. We had two kids. Peggy's an overquaffed nag, Al lives the miserable life of a shoe salesman, and neither Bud nor Kelly show signs of having a functioning brain. But in uh, a little while, you'll be up and out of the house and on your own in just two, three... <laughs> 30 years. The first TV unit to truly revel in their dysfunction. The Bundys were that mean family that always said what you wished you could. Don't you have anything to say to me? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> do you agree with our list? You're on the list, pal. Which TV family do you think has the worst behavior? If there's any justice in the universe, she's shoveling shit in hell. For more misbehaving top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Yep, our family is as functional as all get out. Could this be the end of our series of events?